Hi, this is Mayor Robert Sullivan, and uh, this is another episode of my uh, Brockton Community Access Cable Show, uh, Brockton. Uh, and it's my honor and privilege today to have the director of the Brockton Public Library System, Mr. Paul Engel. Paul, thank you for joining us. Mayor, thank you for having me. So really the gist of uh, our Brockton is exactly what the title says. It's our Brockton, it's everybody's Brockton. And a huge component of the city of Brockton, in my humble opinion, is the library system and what offerings the library does. Um, but before we get into that, Paul, if you wouldn't mind, I know you've been here since December of 16. Yeah. Uh, so it's going by awful quick. <laughs> You're doing an awesome job. Thank you. Um, I mean, I worked with you as a city councilor at large and now as the mayor. Um, just truly impressed with your dedication, your professionalism, your passion, um, and your team, you know, your yeah. team at the library. Um, the main library, of course, the East Branch and West Branch. But if you wouldn't mind telling the viewers a little bit of back, uh, background information, it would be very helpful. Sure. Um, my background is actually in music. Um, I started playing uh, the electric bass back in, in upstate New York uh, because the local garage band in my neighborhood didn't have a bass player and they recruited me. That's great. And I've been playing bass ever since. And um, incidentally, the drummer in that group too is still playing drums. But uh, uh, I ended up um, hearing about a school up in Boston called the Berklee College of Music uh, when I was in, in high school. And I attended Berkeley in the 80s uh, for a couple semesters. And then I went on the road, did some tr touring, traveling, playing, and I went back in 1990 to, to Berkeley to finish my degree. And um, when I was back there, I started working in their library. Mm. And I really liked it, and I liked academia a lot. And I wanted to kind of change, you know, my father says, you know, you can have one year of experience 10 times, or you can have 10 years of experience. And I thought what I was doing was one year of experience <laughs> multiple times. Um, so I, I said, oh, let me, let, me, let me see if I can get into academia somehow. So after I graduated Berkeley, I went down to the University of North Texas, and I did concurrent degrees in, in music composition and library science. Oh, you did? Yeah, and, um, and then I, I was finishing my degree in library science down there and I needed to do a practicum, an unpaid internship, which I did not want to do. I was already working in the science library as a librarian mm -hmm. down there. Mm -hmm. So I called my old boss at Berkeley. I said, Gary, can you get me out of this practicum with the work I did it for you? And he said, sure. And we got talking and I said, how, how you doing? And he said, well, I'm really desperate for a catalog librarian. I'm, I'm building a new integrated library system at Berkeley. And I said, how about me? And that was it. That I hung up it. the phone, I had a job. Oh, wow. That's great. What a wonderful story. <laughs> it is a good story. And the rest is history, and The rest right? is history. And I, I worked at Berkeley for 21 years. Uh, I, I left there uh, in 2016. I was the, the, um, the, the director of the Stan Getz Library. And mm. I'd been the director there for about 15 years. And then you came to Brockton. I came to Brockton. You know, I, I interviewed. Um, it was, I, I, I actually saw the Brockton job posted earlier. I think it was when Elizabeth Marcus took the job. And I was surprised when I saw it come up in, in June or whenever it was in 2016. And I thought, well, why, why don't I interview? Why not? You know, I was interviewing in other places yeah. in Toronto and I was interviewing out in California. And um, I, I sat, I came into the library, had never been there before. And I, I just went, wow, this yeah. is a great library. And I started looking around and, you know, and um, I interviewed with, with Mark. He was the chair at the time and Jocelyn. And, and, jo and uh, Joe Polycape was on the team, and, and Gene Drenicourt. And you know, I really liked the conversations we were having. I liked the energy I felt from that group. Um, and that just got me thinking, hmm, maybe this is where I should go. Yeah. And I, I had no public experience whatsoever. Uh, I had a lot of administrative experience. Yes. And, I, and, I, and, I, and when the job was offered, I took it. Excellent. And you know something, Mayor? In all of the years I was at Berkeley, I thought being a librarian was rewarding. But when I started working for the public system, and, and for Brockton specifically, I, I didn't realize just how rewarding. You know, I, I say this, Paul, I mean, it's a gem in the city. It, it really is. is. And if people have never visited the main library, they're missing out. Um, just the offerings, first of all, mm -hmm. but also the artwork. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, the funding came from Andrew Carnegie many, many, many years ago um, to create a library system, and it's flourished. Um, and, and we're continuing to this day, and, and again, your leadership uh, is exemplary. We have wonderful people on the library board. I've just appointed uh, uh, another one and reappointed some as well. And we're going to continue that process, really dedicated public servants. Uh, and it's not just for, for the kids. Of course, we have a wonderful offering for children. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's, it's throughout, really, the spectrums of the city of Brockton. You know, the seniors love it. Mm -hmm. um, but why don't we talk about now, because of COVID-19, yeah. um, you know, it's had drastic impacts on our health, on our welfare, on our finances. It definitely impacted the library system. Mm -hmm. Why don't we talk about 
what's happened since COVID and where we are right now with the library system? Sure. Um, I, I can also say, you know, I, I was I was a director at, at Berkeley during 9-11, and I thought that was the high watermark of my my skills as a, as a, as a crisis management. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're in it now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we had to close, of course, in, in March, and, and um, you know, we, we all did it in agreement that it was the right thing to do, and it was the right thing to do. Uh, we started offering curbside delivery about a month ago, and what that is is you can you, we were calling people with the holds that they had already put on, and or, and then we were saying your holds are ready and setting up a time, and mm -hmm. you come down to get the books, and, and that's been working great. And literally, um, you'd meet them on outside. We'd literally like put it right on a cart, yeah, you know, and, yep. and then step yep. back Service and make them with up. a smile. There you <laughs> that's go. Right. Very individual. You had the mask on. No one could see if you were smiling. <laughs> you look at the eyes. <laughs> the eyes always <laughs> smile. <laughs> And then, so that, so we, we, we were doing that, and, and, you know, and I knew that the governor was thinking about the, uh, the, his next stage, yes. uh, three, and, and uh, my next stage, with the plan that I had shared with you and with, with Jocelyn and the trustees, uh, was, to, uh, was from curbside, was to, was to reinvent the library in the Lingos Auditorium. And so people can come in now, st starting on, on this past Monday, yes. the 6th. Yes. Uh, they can come into the library through the White Avenue doors. Uh, there are four socially distanced uh, computer stations, so people can use the computer stations. We have a few tables if you have uh, forms to fill out, taxes, unemployment, all sorts of forms that need mm -hmm. to be filled out. We're offering free printing, uh, up to 10 pages, okay. and we're offering free faxing. Um, we, we'll, and we're also offering curbside printing. So if you if you drive up to the library, you can use the wireless to to print, um, or Excellent. or you can email our, our our reference department, and they will print it and, and get in touch with you. Oh, what an amenity and, and, that and is! And we'll we'll curbside deliver that too. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and then we also have the children's room open by appointment only. Okay. So family, one family at a time, yep. fifteen minutes in. Then we we disinfect behind them when they leave. The next family comes in. Um, and starting next week, we're going to do the same model with the branches. So the east and west branches will have uh, appointment only, uh, uh, either an individual or a family can come in and, and use the library for, for 15 to 30 minutes. I don't remember what we yeah, <laughs> settled yeah, on. No. And then after they leave, we'll, we'll disinfect behind them. Um, and we're so they pre-call, you yep, call in yep, advance, yep, get, make they an give you a dedicated time yep. for that family. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and I just want to commend you because, um, again, you're a department head, uh, you, your leadership is exemplary. When you gave me the plan, it was it met all the safety precautions, all the health standards, uh, and really the need was, listen, we talk about it. I'm the mayor, you're the director of the library, we're in the people business, yep. right? Yeah. We serve the people. Um, and you know, there's a dire need right now, you know, in terms of people needing access to computers and, like you said, printing, and also books. Could you, mm -hmm. Paul? Could you tell the viewers right now? There's a book program right now, and, and you've been instrumental in this to help our seniors and our vets. Yes. Could you share that? Absolutely. Um, I, I stole the idea from from Boston. It's all right. <laughs> but you know, we like, borrowed it. Yes. Borrowed right. it. <laughs> well, Igor Stravinsky always said, "Good composers borrow. Absolutely. Great composers steal." Steal. There you <laughs> so, go. so, um, so what what I saw what they were doing, and essentially I turned it into a Brockton thing. Um, I, I went to the the Library Foundation, mm -hmm. and I said, "Hey, if if I can get ten thousand dollars from you." Um, I will broker a deal with a local bookstore, buy some books from them, and then we'll distribute them to, to the people of Brockton. That was as far as I, I, the idea went. Um, I, I used um, uh, Paperback Junction in Easton. Yes. And, and um, I gave her a, a fair amount of business, and, and I think that helped her out a lot too. Um, and I wanted it to be a local business. I didn't want to go to Amazon. I didn't want to go to Wiley or Baker and Taylor. And there isn't any local big bookstores in Brockton not, not, anymore. Not, not really. Right, I, I really right, found that out. Right. And, um, and so, but but that Easton's a, a, they're a local shop yeah. and, and uh, that was good enough for me and and then then I didn't know what I was going to do from there and I was I was talking to her and all of a sudden Leona Martin from the NAACP gets in touch with me and says do you have any books that we could distribute and I was like Leona you just made my day yeah, she's <laughs> and, awesome and then the NAACP got involved Phyllis with the distribution and, Phyllis yeah, yeah. yeah and so they they distributed books to kids at the high school. Uh, 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 food. Uh, they did the, drop the ten off. sites. Yeah, the ten the breakfast sites. and the lunch drop sites. Yeah, yep. we 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 kind of pushed the books off, and and they they really took care of all of that. I I I went to one of the sites yep. as a as a as a helper, but but I stepped back and let them figure that out. They did a great job, and also we gave some books to Dave Farrell over at the VA, and we gave some books to Janice at the Council on Aging. 
Yeah. And I remember, so just for the viewers to know, we have a, a department meeting, a department head meeting. It's Zoom now. Yep. Uh, we're not back to the new normal yet. But um, uh, And when Paul mentioned this and shared this information with the department heads, I had said, you know, let's let's consider the veterans, which is mm -hmm. Dave Farrell, and also Janice Fitzgerald, who is the director of the Council on Aging. And without hesitation, uh, Paul said it's done. Uh, and that speaks volumes for him. But it also creates the collaboration approach mm -hmm. here in Brockton. That's what makes Brockton Brockton, right? So um, the library system... When we get back to you know whatever it's going to be in terms of opening, I mean you're open now. We're doing it in a health standard rate, we're meeting the protocols, but the library offers a lot more than just books. You know, there's sure. genealogy mm -hmm. uh, research there. Um, you, you still have microfiche. Yep. Um, um, you know, the artwork is is, is is stellar. But there's also programs for children and parents of young children as well. Could you share some of that information? Uh, of course. Well, um, for the children, we we offer. And, and we and we still offer story times, mm. and you know, in in the in the in the old world, we would do them in person. Yes. We would have a, a, a either a librarian or or, a, or somebody come in and and read the books and interact with the children there. Uh, when COVID nineteen hit, we had to close. We we went to a virtual story time, mm. and you know, we had to figure out how to do that. And and of course, you know, then all of a sudden, I get a call from 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 uh, Carrie and she's like, you know, the mayor wants to do one of these. Yeah. I'm like, great. You know? <laughs> I love it. I love it. So I do it every single Friday. I read two books every Friday. I've been doing it for weeks and, and really it's the highlight of my week. Um, it's, it's, it's as, as a dad of three young kids, I just great, take great joy in it. Uh, and so if you haven't checked it out, you don't have to watch me, but if you haven't checked it out and you have young children, please go on to the, to the website. Um, and you can click on um, the dedicated link relative to the children's side. So that's, that was, whose brainchild, who came up with that idea? Well, I, I, probably the children's department. I, I think, you know, there's kind of, the, there's this holistic uh, library kind of shift in, 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 in March. And all of us, not just Brockton, but every library in the country started thinking, how are we going to deliver services mm. to our, our patrons? And so I, I think numerous people were thinking, well, Facebook Live, we can do. Uh, and then, of course, the publishers jump in and say, well, you know, technically you can't do that because it's, it's, it's illegal distribution. But we're going to waive that. We're going to let you yeah. do that. So I'll, it took a lot of, 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 of generosity, uh, not only of the publishers, but people's time, like, like yourself. I mean, you're a very busy man. But you make time every Friday. It's rewarding. I find you know, it so and, rewarding. And, and it's up for weeks, Mary. You've been doing it for about three months. Yeah. <laughs> well, it goes by. When you like it, you like it. And, uh, and I, I said to Paul, I'll do it for as long as, yeah. as they want me to do it. Another thing, unfortunately, it was great, and I attended as many as I could, the women's suffrage. Uh, they were in-person seminars, uh, information sessions. It was awesome. And then COVID hit. But you didn't stop. You didn't stop. And, and again, this is such an important topic. It's historical. Uh, in light of what's going on, it's in, extremely important mm -hmm. for Brocktonians and those outside of Brockton to understand. Could you just explain what exactly the whole basis of that is and, and how you're moving on that right now? Well, the, um, the, the, I, I, there's a great uh, uh, team that, that's, that, that's been uh, assembled to, to put this together. It's a year-long celebration of the 100th anniversary of, of the suffragette movement in America. Um, Pat Monteith and Jen mm -hmm. Belcher from the library, they've, they've been instrumental in, in, in creating this along with Catherine from the, um, um, from the Blanche Ames estate. Uh, and, you know, again, and nominally me, I, 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 I throw my two cents in when, when, it, when, it, when it's effective. Uh, when COVID hit, you're right, we were like, uh oh, what do we do? And, yeah. and, and of course, the other thing is it's grant money that we're spending. So we have two grants. One's, one's from the Barbara, the Barbara Lee Foundation, and the other one is from the Mass Humanities. And so we're like, we got to figure out how to do this online. <laughs> and yeah. so uh, everything from March forward changed. Uh, we're, we, we, we shifted, we, we had Zoom, uh, Zoom events now. We're doing panel discussions where we, we, we had to modulate everything to fit that environment. But we have, and, and they have been fantastic. Yeah. I've been to three of them so far. And, and you know, Willie Wilson's come, come on, and he's talked. And I, I've learned so much about American history in, in those three sessions and hearing the, the people we've brought in. Uh, I, forgive me, I can't remember the names of, the, of some of the other speakers, yeah. but, but they're all at the level of, of a Willie Wilson. Amina yeah. Pilgrim was, was there for one yes, or two. Yes, yes, yeah. And Dr. Pilgrim was, you know, just an amazing uh, mind. You know, she's somebody who really knows what she's talking about. And, 
So I've been learning, and, and you know, part of the library, and part of why libraries do these things, Mayor, is we promote lifelong learning. That's right. You know, at the top of the mural and above the old library director's door that's now our makerspace, it says the, the public library, the people's university. And that, that, that's what it is? <laughs> that's no, exactly that's what, what it is. is. And, and again, you, you open it up by talking about, you know, your love of music uh, and your talent, and it is a talent and a skill, and it's, it's God-given. Um, one thing that you've done is you've also brought music to the library, mm -hmm. you know, uh, quartets from the symphony, mm -hmm. and, and it's extremely important. And the symphony in Brockton is just wonderful. And, and my mission as mayor is I want to get it back locally. I want the holiday concert, not, nothing against Easton, but I don't right. want to have to go to Oliver Ames to go to the holiday concert. I want it to be in Brockton. And, but you, you bring it to the library, the main library. Um, talk about that, because music's your passion. Yeah. Um well, if you walk into the, the, the main lobby of, of, the, of the Thomas P. Kennedy main branch, you've yes. got to make sure it's the Thomas yeah. P. Kennedy main branch. That's now. right. And you walk up the stairs and, and you see this great expansive uh, lobby. Um, the first thing I thought about was, wow, this would be a great place to have a string quartet. Yeah. And then, it, you know, then um, uh, uh, Shan, Lucia retired and, and they did bring a string quartet in for that. And I was right. <laughs> it really is great acoustics. Yeah. And we just figured, why not have a symphony, um, use the Brockton Symphony, give them a, a venue to perform in, in, in this great open space. It's, and, and so far, I think people who are skeptical about it really turned around really quick. And we've had other people in there, too. I bring musicians I know from Boston down mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. the time. Um, I've had uh, some great pianists and uh, harmonica players and stuff like that. It's th that space right there is just a great sounding room for, for our hall for music. It's a... And, and we just set some chairs up, and, 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 and there you go. And just go, yeah. And, 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 and again, I mean, it's been a variety of events, right? There was, when I was running for mayor, there was a debate there. Yep. Um, you mentioned Pat Monteith, who is a, a friend of mine and a neighbor of mine. Um, she's done uh, exhibits on NASA there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's been Lego competitions for youth to build Lego competitions. And yeah. it's just, you know what, the library's just awesome in Brockton. Um, and, and, you know, we, we have a commitment. You have a commitment for me as mayor because I love the library and, and the do. offerings. Um, but I just, you know, w believe it or not, 20 minutes is almost up. I, I didn't know if there was anything else that you wanted to share about the library or about you or, or, or next steps in terms of how you see the library going after Ooh. we get through this COVID. <laughs> well, I think th that's a good, a good uh, t uh, question because I think when we get back to a normal you know, I don't know, there's a vaccine out there or something where we can have events in person at the mm -hmm. library again. I think that what we're learning from this whole experience with COVID-19 can be positive um, in that we have, we, have, we have learned how to do things in the, in the online environment that we weren't doing before. We were having in-person things, but mm -hmm. now we can, do, we can do hybrid things. We can combine the, the two of those things. And, and, and just in, in my mind, we will go back to the services that we were offering, but we will have additional services that we will be offering in the online environment. And I'm actually going to be meeting with CFO Clarkson later today about a, a, a possibly getting a CARES Act grant to um, enhance our, our website. I don't know if I'm supposed to say that, but yeah. <laughs> but you know, no, I mean, hey, I, we have to kick the tires I, and yeah, everything. We're, we're we're going at it. We're gonna we're gonna see if we get some money to to re up our re, reinvent our website to be more dynamic, to be more, you know, I, I want to say actually to be kind of more like the, the city's website. I think uh, that's, a, that's a nice website. You got. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. And, and one last question is sure. if a resident wanted a book and it wasn't physically at the Brockton Library, is the interlibrary loan system with other municipalities still in play? Yes. Uh, that, was, that was shut down, but as of this week, Delivery is back. Excellent. So we can, Excellent. we can get titles for you. You know, you, you, you can either do it yourself, put a hold on it, and it will come. If you need help, come down, and we'll work with you. Um, you know, we're right in the in the lobby of Lingos. Um, give us a call. You know, the, we're back to kind of doing one on one sessions like that. Fantastic, right fantastic. Well, uh, I want to thank you, Paul. Uh, thank my you. guest uh, on on uh, our Brockton today is is Mr. Paul Engel, director of the Brockton Public Library System. Again, uh, I say this every Friday when I, when I, when I read um, Story Time to the Kids. Uh, reading makes you um, much more worldly, uh, more intelligent, um, more grasping of different um, facts and figures. And I just keep saying to my children, read, read, read. And I mean that. So again, uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to, to visit the Brockton Public Library, please don't hesitate. Uh, it's a safe uh, environment, disinfecting, and masks is mandatory. But 
the end of the day, uh, it's really, really a gem in our city of champions. And Mr. Engel himself is a champion in his own right. So I want to thank you for watching us. I want to thank you for uh, listening and learning and working with us as we collaborate and work together um, to make it a safer community that we all call the city of champions, the city of Brockton. Thank you. I'll be back again soon. Mayor Robert Sullivan, and it is an honor and privilege to be your mayor. Thank you.